slam Ivern, or if they wait and just kind of call out that maybe they don't expect Blabber to pick it up, and that's we're going with LeBlanc. LeBlanc for Palafox. Potentially flex for Dokla, but probably not. Um, I will say, I was going to joke about the, the uh, Tristana ban for C9 not being for first pick Tristana, but so MNS doesn't play it, because that was a, a bit of a rough Tristana game there. Yeah, I was interested in an Ivern first pick. Maybe they were concerned that it would be a Kaisa Jace poke comp on the other side. I'm not sure, but it's still left open. We'll see how it goes. But the Renekton picked up by Cloud9 as a blind early. Uh, do you like that so far? What I part? like Renekton a lot when Jax is out here. Um, it's actually not that easy to pick a physical damage top laner into Renekton that can beat out, edge out their Renekton for the majority of the game. So normally Jax is really good at matching him. You can opt into things like Aatrox, which is pretty good on the patch. However, Renekton wins those matchups. So mm. you kind of just pick the biggest bruiser there. I, I'm a huge fan of Olaf. I, I would love to see Olaf into Renekton here. I think that matchup is great. Uh, don't think I will get to see it, but um, in these these games with a lot of melee comps, they have really mosh pit type compositions where really all 10 champions are sprinting into each other trying to um, kill the first target. Mm. Uh, I think it would make a ton of sense to play a champion like Olaf. That said, they've opted into Ezreal Orn, which is basically um, Hard to say that it's like a poke comp, because again, Kaisa has those properties. She's really strong on the patch. I'm shocked they didn't first pick her almost. Yeah. Of, you know, last game, she was quite an issue. Uh, and then coming into next game, uh, they have a plan with this Ezreal Orn here. I'm, uh, I'm guessing they just want to scale, uh, look to go uh, pick pick up more scaling in the 4-5. I'm just not sure what that's going to look like. Yeah, we'll see if, if maybe Ivern did get through. It doesn't feel like, uh, you know, I think Blabber can play. It's, it's not his yeah. preferred play style, though. I think he likes something that can have a little bit more agency, even if it's not carrying, at least picking your own fight easier. Mm -hmm. uh, so he goes back to the Sejuani to pair up with their Necton. I do think for NRG, they're setting up a pretty nice 4-1 comp, which I think will involve Palafox splitting quite a bit and kind of swapping up because uh, you can usually have quite a bit of push if you're going for the still obnoxious static ship LeBlanc. And he had a great game. He yeah. was like, I forget exactly his scoreline, but he was 3-0-5 at one point and felt like uh, maybe he's saying, give me even more individual carry potential here with a LeBlanc and splitting away. Just making this series interesting to me as a drafting note, both of these teams are the ones that actually have prioritized LeBlanc throughout the, throughout the playoffs. Uh, we saw the first pick LeBlanc in the first series from C9. Um, and NRG is a team that have banned LeBlanc on first phase when they feel like the enemy team can pick it or pick, them, pick up themselves if they think it's a good angle. So I really want to see how they play it uh, to the point that you've made, Bupo, about like just how strong Kaisa is. I want to see what the identity of NRG's comp is at the very tail end of it because with LeBlanc, you're expecting, oh, side lane, but you have an orange. So you're going to be not necessarily winning, you know, both sides. You're not going to win through side lane. Oh, team fighting? Well, Sejuani and Kaisa, I feel like they have a stronger team fight. So I, I want to see what energy's composition ends up looking in 4 5. Yeah, and it is interesting to see the energy band out uh, the, the Jace, but then also the Zeri, because they're like, okay, we do know that. Kaisa can still be flexed in the mid. I believe MNS has played it. I know Palafox certainly has. Um, so that was something that they decided that they did not want to see coming out of the bot lane. So now that the bans have expired, I'm really curious what to see what the NRG 4-5 is going to be because the one big benefit that drafting something like Ezreal Warren does give you is that they're super self-sufficient sidelines, mm. right? Mm -hmm. And I did mention that I do want to see them playing through Palafox here and Ezreal Warren are two of the best champions. So just leave them alone in the, their own lanes, farm at their own pace. You don't need to interact with them, invest any jungle resources. And LeBlanc is the mid laner with I would say one of the best, if not the best gang setup out of any mid laners in the game. Yeah. That's why I actually quite like the start of this draft. I'm just, I have to see the four or five play out to really understand where they're going in terms of scaling and whether or not they're gonna be able to go head to head in that mosh pit type of game. And Ooh. Like, oh, yeah. There's the X Factor I was waiting for, right? Like this is the type of champion that just throws the game kind of on its head. You don't expect Kha'Zix to jump into a 5v5 and win. I definitely think this will be a, Ezreal stays mid lane, wave clears forever, and then we have LeBlanc and Kha'Zix re wreaking havoc on the side lanes, assuming they can get ahead. And that's no. a Kaisa mid too. Yeah, on the other side, I, I am, it is really interesting to see that C9 still opted. Obviously they did the Zeri hover, Energy took away the Zeri, and they're like, we're still gonna send Kaisa mid. We're gonna pick the Sivir, which is something we've seen have a little bit of a higher priority over in LCK. So that's super interesting coming out of this C9 draft. I think the Sivir also works well for giving more engaged power to your team. So if you are trying to split like Whippo's talking about and just sit mid with the Ezreal, it's the Sivir can speed up the Sejuani, the Rakan, everyone to get more on top of the people so that LeBlanc can't sit in side lanes forever. That being said, the casters for this one's gonna be Azale, Flowers, and you, Whippo. 
<laughs> so you can head on. Connect into the Sejuani or CC up by Sven on the Rakan. Yeah. You are really squishy. So when you go in, you have to yeah. kind of one shot someone, proc Dust Blade, and pray you can survive. One big thing that Kha'Zix has is the Voice Spike evolution that he usually unlocks around level 11, and that gives him like a 70 to 80% slow, I believe, uh, on everyone he hits. Well, as we're seeing the team stare each other down here at level one, let's toss things down to Gabby with a sideline interview with C9 coach Mithy. Thank you, Flowers. So last week, Palafox and Contracts were talking a bit about being in Blabber's head, Contracts spending that time rent-free. What do you think of Contracts here on the Kha'Zix in this game? Uh, well, about that, um, I definitely did tell Blabbers to try and like, you know, ignite some motivation uh, against them. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm just looking forward to that. All right. Did it work? Did you ignite some motivation? I, I'd say so. I'd say so. You know, they're, they're gamers, so they're pretty chill all the time. But yeah, I hope so. Thoughts on some of the switch ups in draft? I feel like Berserker has been such a power point for y'all, but a different look for him in game number two. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we're just doing what uh, feels right for us. And uh, we've, we've practiced this before and we feel comfortable. So. Yep, we've seen it before, and we'll see it again here. Mithy, thank you so much for stopping by. Thank you. Back to the game. I'm curious on your take, Whippo. How do you feel about Berserker piloting something like the Sivir that has less individual agency compared to a lot of the champions that he's kind of better known for? Uh, I think Sivir in this type of game uh, isn't that great, personally. Like I said, like she's she's going to be PVEing most of this game, like clearing <laughs> midwaves against the Ezreal, pushing CS him in and moving. Edition. Yeah. <laughs> uh, normally in this meta, like if we would swap the, the comps around, I would love to see Berserker pilot the Sivir against like a big melee comp, short range. Like I'm sure he can one v nine a game like that. Uh, that said, I think this is one of Saver's biggest weaknesses and why she's fallen out of favor is she doesn't really um, participate in the game as we see some summoner spells being blown. Yeah, a little bit of a scrap here early on, just that ghost for Berserker trying to make sure that they can take this trade as far as it possibly will go. But unfortunately, it doesn't turn into a whole lot, just about 100 HP up for both targets. Palafox being shoved back underneath the turret there, losing the passive as MS takes early control over the mid lane with the Kaisa. Yeah, it looked like... Berserker got a little bit nervous, you know, as we saw that mount up from Ignar, you know, was worried about potentially him flashing in, looking for an engage. So early pops the ghost, trying to stay out of range. Uh, but good, good hesitation, good patience from NRG's side. As soon as he pops the ghost, you got that for free. You don't need to do anything else. 100% it's like set support back in the day where he would just flash on you level one and rel with that mount up uh, level one. It's very reliable CC together with the Glacial Augment. It's really hard to get away from her level one. She can get a big chunk and then she plays with Hex Flash for the rest of the lane. Ooh, I like what Contracts did here, just waiting in the Rush ready to apply some quick burst to Blabber, but Blabber easily able to return some of that there. The power of Sejuani with the Aftershock plus the Arctic Armor makes it so she's pretty resilient to those snap bursts of damage and then bringing Fudge down here too. Blabber's going to try to steal away this blue buff, but it looks like we're going to have rotations over from everybody. Dokla throwing out the little Volcano Spire thing there. I wish I remember the actual name for that. I don't. All right, Energy still got their blue buff it. secured. I'm Volcanic rupture. Volcanic, Volcanic rupture, rupture, that's what it was. Rupture Which was I the word. definitely didn't just mouse over and check. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I knew totally for not, sure, totally which not, is yeah. why I hesitated. Something really interesting about Orn versus Renekton is this is a matchup that I've played many times. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it's also a very popular matchup in competitive play because the Orn is one of the champions that's actually strong enough early game to bully the Renekton a little bit. Not enough to stop him from getting pushed, but you saw there C9 backed off because Fudge was too low on health for a real 2v2 skirmish. So while Renekton yeah. is stronger, in skirmishes two versus two, three versus three, he's not strong enough to really run over Orn, assuming the Orn knows how to play the matchup. I mean, the W is just so strong against melee champions in the early levels. You know, it allows you to fight, allows you to actually trade back and forth. You know, as you're saying, to have them jump low enough. And also, LeBlanc had the inside track, which I think was kind of the additional complication. You know, if they committed to it, MNS was coming, but MNS would have been so much later having to walk through the river where LeBlanc could just run to the blue pit, W over the wall, uh, and all of a sudden it's three two. And as we're talking about individual lane matchups and how the champions interact, important thing to note what happened on the screen right there. Berserker's reaction times are easily fast enough to reactively block the Shattering Strike from Ignar's Rel, but Fudge and Blabber now looking for Dokla, ready to flash follow as the Orn tries to get away. Blabber staying on top of him for the Aftershock proc, and it's first blood to the croc. C9's the board. Nicely done by Cloud9. They fully commit to it. You know, Dokla was trying to shove in that wave, trying to actually be able to push that up. He had a ward not in Tribrush, but by the time he sees him, they both just commit, they flash in, they wait out the Bellow's Breath, they get the stun, and Blabber's there to follow. One of the big reasons why invading the enemy top side, so Blabber did a three cam bottom side into red and then straight into Contrax's jungle. As a result, because Fudge crashed the wave, it's gonna bounce back. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the Raptors and the Golems are still up for Blabber, so that's a really long time where uh, Dokla has to play safe, he's bleeding CS, and eventually he stuck out his neck a little too far, and uh, C9 managed to 
Well, snap it in half. <laughs> That's, yeah, we got, it's, it's an, an alligator, alligator, right? It's yeah, an alligator. You are <laughs> painting a vivid picture there, buddy. I respect that. I like that. As Zimenez now taking some really significant damage from Palafox there, staying on top of him long enough to get the chain to connect. I know a lot of people are critical of the modern-day LeBlancs that are building Static Shiv and the like because they say that it does not do enough later on, even if it gets ahead. So I'm really curious how well Palafox is going to be able to it, like truly find impact in this game, whether it's through split pushing, whether it's through finding those significant picks in team fights. I mean, I think LeBlanc just functions as a poke jet, basically, with Ezreal, mm -hmm. and then you have the uh, W Evolve on Kha'Zix. They're going to be trying to poke, and then they're going to try to find engage you know, once people are chunked down. Um, but an interesting fact, Berserker actually 7-1 on the Sivir. His only loss on the Sivir uh, was to Palafox, Contrax, and Dokla last year in summer when they were on CLG. So it uh, does have a good success, you know, good track record on it. But as has been the pattern, C9 have been challenged by NRG. Oh, Ibn S jumping back in after Palafox here. Flash for the auto attack to finish him off. Palafox not respecting that mid lane Kai'Sa and he pays for it. Really well done by MNS. So a big thing here is that Palafox still had TP advantage. So he was trying to chunk him out a little bit to try and get an advantage when he base TPs eventually. MNS had none of that and uh, took the all lane angle because he does have a small item advantage while Palafox is trying to poke him out to, to really leverage the most out of the TP advantage he created. Yeah, it was really well played. And, and the problem is he used double distortion there. So he doesn't actually have his ult distortion or his W to go back. So with the plasma applied, as soon as you've used both those Ws, you can just kill her instinct in. There's nowhere for Palafox to go. So MNS finds that opportunity, goes in, follows with the flash, and is able to get that solo kill really nicely done by him. And Cloud9 out to a really good start. Both their solo lanes now in an advantage. Sivir is just kind of chilling, farming on bot side. So everything looking pretty good for Cloud9 thus far. And with the bottom lane 2v2 favoring C9 right now, it would appear, you can see Blabber's also headed down to the bottom side river. They might be able to go for the first Drake here soon. Hasn't been any super early priority on that like we got to see back in the first game where C9 had it early enough. I think it was five, six minutes they took that first Drake, but Blabber's not going to go for it quite yet. Does have level six here on the Sejuani. Contracts also level six on Kha'Zix as Palafox jumps in for a trade on Imanaz, but it's Blabber who arrives oh. first and slightly misses the ult. Now Imanaz in trouble as Contracts shows up and the bug is hungry. Palafox ends up taking the first kill as Contracts flashes over the wall to try to escape from Blabber. Palafox trying to keep Blabber rooted up in place here, make sure they can't chase down his jungler. Contracts escapes into the enemy jungle. I don't know if he just goes for an execution here or if he tries to find the full recall. Well, it looks like he's trying to actually just escape. He's going to be able to potentially get out. Blabber doesn't know where he is. Sven, though, is hunting. Contracts jumps over the wall to go oh, after no. Sven, who... Oh, he Sven. tried to flash ignite him, but he yeah. didn't have range. Oh, That's unfortunate. no. Sven thought he might be able to pick that one up oh. for free, but he's going to want that one back. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no take backs on that one. And uh, Fudge couldn't actually roam to try to pick him off because he was pushed to his tower, so he didn't want to drop the wave for what could have been nothing. You know, the wave was at his turret, so Doko, good job pushing that in, allows them to get out. And that slight miss on the ulti from Blabber ends up costing him a lot with contracts there, but that looks so close to the Blanc, it looked like it practically tagged his character. Let's see it one more time. That is yeah. so close. I mean, it goes basically through, the animation goes through his character model. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is that is one where you're like, ah, yeah, right, right, that is what it is, you right, know, that is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> he takes those in stride, you know, it's like, yeah. oh, next time I'll hit them. It's two sides of the same coin. There's that, and then there's like the Nautilus and, uh, and Bard, they just the Q's cheat oh, yeah. so hard. Uh, true. Not all skill shots are created equally, but Energy will be happy enough about being able to get out of that one without losing Palafox or Contracts, considering it was so close for both of them. Berserker still with control over this bottom side here as both the AD carries have been left to their lonesome, and he'll pick up the first plate, shoving in these waves. One really big thing about that mid-jungle play is that LeBlanc and Kha'Zix are two champions that change depending on how strong they are. The way they interact with other champions in the game, very different. Fudge, Pop of the Dominus going all the way in here after Dokla, who summons up the Ornhorn, but Fudge with the flash to reposition himself so Dokla can't find anything here. He's going to force the flash back out of the enemy top laner too. So both of these guys now, without that critical summoner spell, we might see some more attention up here soon.
Really important when you're playing Orn and you're trying to set up his ultimate that you hit both parts of the Brittle. Uh, the really Brittle procs is what makes Orn one-shot you. Uh, a lot of people complaining about his damage is that is why. Brittle is scaling not off how many points in W, actually, but uh, off of Orn's own level. So th whenever he uh, calls his ultimate, even if he maxes Q, he actually ends up doing a significant amount of max health damage. And that's why Fudge there flashes just to be, sh just to be safe, not have to deal with any of that max health Brittle damage because, well, when Renekton uses his ultimate, his health pool increases, therefore Brittle deals more damage, which is another reason why this matchup is quite, quite good for Orn. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, at the end of the day, once those spells are actually down, Doko has to flash away because long cooldowns early on. Fudge is obviously going to out-sustain you in the, as far as the damage is concerned. So Fudge trades the flash, Doko has to flash back to be able to actually stay alive. And it ends up just being that slight advantage for Fudge still on the top side, but Dokla holding strong. You know, dying once, honestly, is not the end of the world because he died when he still had TP. Mm -hmm. He didn't really lose experience. He didn't really lose a lot of farm. So I don't think the Orn really cares about being a little bit down, um, but you definitely want to see the Kha'Zix of LeBlanc as you're talking about, but both those are the guys that need to get ahead. Those are the guys that need to have a lot of gold because as you say, you know, it really does change how you can play the game. 100%, they need to have enough damage in their items basically to threaten one-shotting people yeah. this game because even though Orn is fantastic scaling and while Ezreal on his own is also great scaling looking at the C9 comp together uh, I think the AP Kai'Sa as well as the Sivir that's really scary scaling to stare down and I yeah. think that uh, Ezreal, Kha'Zix and LeBlanc have like intangible scaling now what do I mean by intangible scaling is at the end of the day the amount of damage these champions can do 5v5 side lane whenever it really depends on how good you are at the champion because they're so <laughs> skill shot dependent so even though you could be the best Ezreal player in the world if you a choke one of the team fights, suddenly your champion does way less damage than it's capable of. So it's very hard to judge, like, oh yeah, NRG, they have Kha'Zix LeBlanc. Yeah. I think that's where the scaling is weakest. But for a champion like Ezreal, he can be a fantastic scaler if you're popping off in a team fight, never missing Qs. Or he can be awful because you're just not connecting the skill shots. And I mean, with Dustblade the way it is now, I always feel like it's so important to get ahead because your survivability is your damage. Getting in, one shotting someone, and proccing yeah. Dustblade is what actually gets you out and what keeps you alive. So you need to have that damage, but they're going to look for a dive on top side. Yeah, they want to kill Dokla before he can even hit the second part of the Orn Horn. They'll slice, they'll dice. It's easy money for C9. The dive works beautifully, and Palafox can't arrive in time to help. Really well played. I mean, Dokla pops the ulti early, but all Cloud9 had to do to survive and make that an easy dive is deny the redirection of that ulti. They're able to send him up on it, able to CC him on it. Now Blabber up here on top side with Zven. Really nice macro play there from C9, of course, finding that two versus one setup. No flash horn. It's not as easy. I, I do think he, he could have eaten and then created a little bit more counterplay as he might find a solo command on Fudge here. Oh, no. close. Nice from Fudge there. He had the minion wave so he could get the second part of the slice and dice for the extra distance to break the chain. That'll allow him to escape Palafoxes. Eminem's being respectful here of energy. He knows the fact that they just got done making that play up on the top side so his own guys are resetting. He does not want to be caught out, does not want to be punished. Eminem's the weak link on Cloud9 back in game number one, the one who was making the most individual mistakes, I would say. So glad to see him cleaning that up a little bit, playing a little bit more safely here in the second game where Cloud9 is still up. One and a half thousand gold, 13 minutes in. We've got two minutes until the second Drake of the game spawns. Well, honestly, I think MNS feels that he has something to prove in playoffs because he is one of those guys that was overlooked a little bit, you know, as far as All Pro, especially compared to last split. There was so much talk about MNS, and now everyone kind of had some of these other mid laners, you know, up there with him or above him, right? You know, yeah. Corey was above him in All Pro, JoJo was above him in All Pro, and there was honestly a lot of discussions about, hey, maybe Palafox actually deserted third team over MNS as well. So I know MNS has been wanting to come in in playoffs here and silence those doubters and try to have. You know, a good series of performances to be able to kind of reestablish himself at the top of the table. Yeah, no doubt. Coming in in a successful team, at least like pretty successful team, and, and, and kind of just being the glue for the team as the guy that comes in uh, is something I can relate to. And eventually kind of want to find your stride is like, what am I known for, right? Am I just glue? Is that all <laughs> Do I just help other great players play not better? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, not, not in that not, sense. Not in that Not a sense. man, just glue. <laughs> <laughs> you know, am I someone that can elevate the team through what my performance? Of life? 
Am I might just glue. <laughs> a little bit of existentialism here in, in game number two. Sure. <laughs> well, MS is going to reposition himself on the other side of the map here, using that teleport to take his place up in the top lane. It is 14 minutes now, so all of the turret plating has fallen. Second Rift Herald is on the map, and it's C9 taking control over the top side river to secure it. True Shop Barrage is going to fire over the top and find it there, but there's just not enough bodies nearby from energy to really challenge for this. You can see C9 wanting to make sure they had everybody up here ready to play around this. Fudge and MS now working together up in the top lane to take down that first turret of the game there in the tier one in top side. It's nearly a 3,000 gold lead for C9 now. I mean, it feels really good when Orn is the one's blood pushing for Cloud9 because Orn is not going to be knocking that tower down anytime soon. So they get the tier one top very easily. They have the Herald in pocket, so they can use that to potentially drop that mid, set themselves up for the dragon because it looks like Cloud9 are going to do just that. Drop the Herald right away, use that to force a response from energy mid lane and then move into the river establish yourself with that river control and try to get the dragon well harold summoned up i don't think this one's gonna get stopped before it completes the charge there we go not quite enough to finish off the turret and energy's gonna pop it immediately thereafter blabber coming in finds the stun on the contracts they want to try to dogpile the enemy junglers then is low but so is dokla imines grabs the kill on dokla to start things off and ignar's not going to escape as he tries to get out on the side C9 popping two in trade for nothing. Big fight there for Cloud9, and they're going to be able to get the mid lane tier one. They're going to be able to get the dragon, and they get the team fight, so they get everything off of that. Blabber just pulled the trigger, I think, a lot more quickly than Energy was expecting. Yes, Contract is able to jump out and survive, but that means he can't re enter the fight. Now MS potentially caught. Yeah, MS jumped on True Shot Barrage over the top to finish him off. Nice pick up there from Energy to at least get something on the back end of a very heavily C9 favored play. I really love the way C9 played that entire sequence. All the way back to MNS's teleport, they realize, oh damn, we're trading sides right now. There's a potential threat on our Kaisa to get dove. Instead of trying to enter NRG side, they teleport the Kaisa all the way to C9 side, trade top tier one plus Herald, and then when they realize NRG's uh, stuck underneath the tier two top, because uh, Palafox still had to go catch that wave, um, he has to use teleport mid, and it turns into a straight up 5v5, which they love to take, of course. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they go in on Contracts. Contracts jumps out, but then he's out of the fight. He has no more contribution. So sure, he didn't kill Contracts, but Ignar is left out to dry. The Orn is left out to dry because the Cloud9 DPS are not threatened whatsoever. They are free firing. They are knocking them down. And then MNS going a little bit too far. I assume that's his reaction not to the team fight, but to his death afterwards. Yeah, I uh, so I assume so. this is a little bit out of order. But MNS, I, I expect, was going up towards top lane to try to catch that wave, but went a bit of a greedy route. Does get caught by Palafox, and nice combo with uh, FBI and Contracts. Definitely looks like he's trying to prove something. Last game, the same thing, where he's trying to take the tier one mid whilst they're taking Drake. Same idea here. They're doing Drake. He's trying to take tier one mid. It feels like he's trying to get an extra gold lead or something. Um, really trying to prove that he is uh, the alpha mid laner, but uh, it turns out he's kind of getting caught and dying in those sequences, so... Refuses to be glue. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's, a, he's in a rubble phase, you know? <laughs> he's not satisfied not being glue. glue. He's not satisfied <laughs> being glue. Um, it, it's what it looks like to me. Uh, obviously, still playing a very solid game, finding that solo kill. Just, I think he's trying to squeeze water from yeah. stone a little bit yeah. here. Wants uh, it a bit too much is how I, yeah, I kind of say. Where it's, and, and I can understand that, you know, where you are having a game and you really want to show yourself, you know, at your best, you're trying to kind of push for more and it makes you play worse at times, right? It makes you make those mistakes uh, because you just want it a little bit too bad. And I think that has been uh, something that has been happening to MS a little bit, but he did get that solo kill early in lane. He's still in a good position in the game, has two items completed here. They took down the towers, he got the solo kill. So Cloud9 way out as far as the gold is concerned. And they're gonna have some pretty powerful carries here as well as a lot of CC and a really tanky front line. So it could be difficult for energy. Yeah, you can see that Cloud9 gold lead still at about three and a half thousand. It was only just now you saw Palafox take that tier one in the bottom lane. That was the first turret secured for energy in this entire game. 18 and a half minutes in now. Objectives have been a little bit of a struggle for him. C9 controlling heralds, the drakes being even, and the turrets just not showing up is a big reason why that gold lead feels as big as it does there for C9. But second items are also coming online for the Cloud9 side. Not quite there just yet for energy. So they're not wanting to take any fights right now. They don't want to fight with this power spike disadvantage. Nice reaction there from Berserker to just make sure the True Shot Barrage can't do anything to him. You've already got Nash and Static done for the Kai'Sa. Still just the Static on the LeBlanc. Over in the jungle, the Radiant Virtue plus the Sunfire Cape makes Blabber a very, very durable Sejuani. Absolutely. I also really like that Sven didn't just autopilot Shirelias like I think a lot of support players do. I think Locket makes way more sense in this game when you're playing against Kha'Zix, when you're playing against LeBlanc, these champions that need to hit that 100 to zero damage. A Locket Shield can make all the difference between that Kha'Zix just dying 
dying, and the cause is actually finishing off your, your AD carry and proccing Dustblade and getting out. Now that the uh, items are getting completed for both Kha'Zix and LeBlanc, I'd love to see them attack MNS on the side lane. I don't know if they can attack Fudge reliably, because of, of course it is a Gore Drinker Renekton. Renekton at this point in the game is still quite powerful. He's about to finish his Black Cleaver, if I'm not mistaken, here on this recall. So I don't think he's going to be a v valuable target. That said, I think MNS needs to get attacked and fast, because the next 5v5 is coming with the next Dragon spawning. And of course, now Baron being on the map, losing a 5v5 might just explode your game. Where are you at in the Kai'Sa Mythic discussion? Because he is going to be going Rageblade. Uh, a lot of people have very opinionated about that. Oh, hold on. Contract's getting locked down as he tried to find a potential pick on the Zven, who still escapes off to the side. The Ornhorn goes through, but it's Ignar who's about to drop first. Blabber kills him with the second part of Sejuani's W. As Palafox at least cleans up Zven and makes it a one for one. Dope is trying to get away now, but Berserker is fired up and ready to go with the Sivir Speed. Blabber keeps the chase alive, going after Palafox, but LeBlanc is too slippery. Cloud9 trades even with energy, but they've got higher health bars, they so they're back Baron. up into the top side river towards the Baron. Yeah, they can threaten this at the very least, make them come. They know the energy has to base. At the very least, you want to get the TP from Dokla, I think, here, and then maybe turn and look to get something done. But with double marksmen, they could commit to it if they want, but it is risky against Kha'Zix to flip. Contracts is already half HP and has no ulti, though. The entry point is difficult. MNS down to one quarter HP. Palafox is going to force them back, so energy does answer. They do have to spend the teleport from the Orn, but they get C9 off the Baron. One really big thing that I'm seeing from our RGs, I don't think they recognize that they're really poke champions. Like, contracts flew in there on the, onto the Rakan as if he was trying to one-shot him. They're really playing fights super quickly and fast, as Fudge is looking for this pick on top lane. Palafox going to need to get away from two here. Fudge going to go pop the early Dominus, get that Fury charging. Palafox wants to kite him around here with the chains. A lot of burst damage onto the LeBlanc. He resets his position back into the alcove, but Blabber's got him, no problem. C9 picking up a freebie. Really sucks to be NRG this game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Not, nothing's really gone their way. I feel like dropping the passive side lanes where they both try and kind of scale up hasn't really gone into their favor because the mid jungle from, from NRG, while there's been glimpses, it really has just all been C9 in this game as they start up the Baron again. Berserker getting caught here. Yes, he spell shields the crash down, but FBI following it up. Nice shutdown on the enemy marksman. C9 still got that Baron at about 4,000 HP. True shot barrage fly through. Contracts on the back side of the wall. C9's got to be careful about this when they don't just want to give this objective away to energy. Ornhorn summoned. Dokla going in, seeing if they might be able to find another kill now onto Fudge as Ignar is burst low, but not before he can find a Magnet Storm. Sven wanted to go after FBI, but he won't find him. Now Blabber's stuck in the middle of four. C9 has made a crucial mistake, and Contracts finds a shutdown. FBI still looking to chase these guys. Fudge has the ulti ready to go again, but he's slowed down. The Rockets, the Kha'Zix, a triple kill for Contracts, and MNS will fall, taking one with him. It's a five for two, and Energy get the ace. Almost a Baron, I may be able. We'll have to see after the replay, but one really big deal why these Baron situations are so good for NRG is because the Baron is the tank for the team at that point. It's a 6v5 for C9 because whilst they're hitting Baron, Ezreal and LeBlanc are poking. Now in this sequence, it was Ezreal doing the poking. The one before this, it was LeBlanc, but because there's so much chip damage on the Blobber for relatively free, uh, it's very easy for them to position themselves in this fight where really, by the time C9 gets to answer the poke, Fudge is already down to half HP. Yeah. Blabber is already down to 70%. All this valuable health lost before the fight starts is exactly how NRG wants to play. And I kind of expected that Cloud9, as soon as as soon as Berserker got caught in transition, I thought they were just going to instantly leave because yeah. it seemed so risky from that spot. And you know, Contracts did have Flash. He had all those cooldowns. So it's not like you're going to 50-50 against Kha'Zix. That is so risky from that spot. So I was really surprised that they didn't just immediately retreat. And I will say, had Contracts played out that last kill a little bit more slowly, I don't think he dies. And then I think they take Baron, right? If I he agree, actually yeah. survives, uh, I think they get Baron. He didn't need to flash in, I felt. But he was hype. He got the triple kill. He, he got the triple kill. kill. You know, he, he wanted, was, he he wanted like an announcement. I feel it. I feel <laughs> it. That said, with the isolation damage onto the Baron, that definitely would have been Baron. That's why I said, like, I yeah. believe they'll get it yeah. because Kha'Zix is fantastic at melting single target uh, neutral died. objectives. Uh, Dokla. This could be a pretty bad situation. Fudge throws down the gauntlet. And he's yeah. going to kill the Dokla here. That's going to be a solo kill. Ready to go. A little bit more damage. Chases through him there. Waited on the second part of the slice and dice to chase the Orn through his own dash. And Fudge cuts him down. The pure 1v1 on the bottom side of the map. 
that's pretty big and fudge is just gonna keep pushing potentially here can take away some camps allows cloud nine to move in on top side fudge has his tp back so cloud nine are gonna be confident to play on the map establish vision control around the baron here and they're gonna have full run of the map for the next you know 30 seconds or so yeah that's a really big deal because i actually feel like nrg just set up their split push like mm -hmm. at the same time that we died bottom lane on nrg side that's when palafox and contracts were starting you see the pink ward is still there the blue team pink ward in the top tri brush that's like exactly where you want your deep vision to be as you can see they're looking for these picks but with orn dead it's so hard to pull the trigger here and look for those really aggressive poke angles look for those tps into the side and playing aggressively on this side it's just not possible when you're 4v5 on the map so absolutely detrimental death there and it kind of forces orn you know on respawn he just has to run bot to actually catch the wave right yep. he doesn't want to lose more cs down there so it means that fudge doesn't even have the tp up towards top side he has more tempo on the map he just recalls heads back out towards his team they'll have time for him to do this because it's going to take so long for orn to actually push into the tier two if he even wants to do so not to mention fudge obviously because he got to push in that deep it's his turn to move into the top side and if c9 were to choose to contest this top side vision against the kazix and leblanc they would break them again in this case they decide to go into the bottom side uh not opting into top side because we're uh completing very important items on mns here as he finished his mythic you asked me about what i think about ginsu's i think realistically speaking both mythics are great for her mm -hmm. as they make the pick here oh mns killer instinct the shield is enough to keep him alive get him back underneath the tier 2 turret c9 ready to reinforce blabber goes in for the ulti but it's going to be dodged however there's no way home for the bug contracts get squished c9 picks off the enemy jungler right next to baron you know what the oh, call is going to be good interrupt. as Bottom side, nice interrupt from Dokla there, using the Orn ulti to stop Fudge from being able to reinforce. But we've still got ourselves energy 3v4 up here at the Baron. Dokla could join them. Fudge is walking over now as Palafox is trying to poke these guys. Remember, there's no jungler on the energy side. C9 know this. They're still trying to burn the Baron. Palafox jumps in for a little bit more poke as Fudge approaches from below. Secured Baron for contract, not for contract. It's over to Blabber and C9. C9 continuing their chase now as Dokla and FBI try to kite back into their own Jungles Ben gets himself back out with the battle dance as Berserker takes out Dokla. FBI tag with a Void Seeker and a bouncing boomerang blade. A shutdown over to Berserker as Ignar tries to escape, but it's a triple for the C980 carry. Palafox jumping back up the wall, trying to distort something, trying to find some kind of a kill on the back end of the fight. Contracts is coming in. He finds Blabber, immediately gets the first kill. Now MS has to try to escape, and Contracts looks for more. Flash into the queue, but it's not quite enough as MS flashes away to escape. My god, what a long fight. Really, yeah. really nice play by C9. They're playing against Ezreal. Ezreal, entirely skill shot based, like I mentioned. And what they did was put the piggy in the front, everyone else behind the purple snake, and you can't get hit by his poke. So what ends up happening is FBI is trying to get poke into the back line. However, because he's ignoring Blabber and his enormous health bar with how fed he is this game, Oh my, another pick here. Yeah, Contracts just oh. has no chance. He's isolated, so he takes every bit of damage from that Akathian rain. Just gets bursted down by Zven and MNS. You asked me about Kaisa's build. I'm just going to interrupt what I was saying and say, look, if she can do that without Luton's Echo, then, you know, like, <laughs> See, what does it really matter? You know, like, <laughs> she wants it to either way. I mean, one auto attacks you four times, the other one auto attacks you twice, one shots you. I mean, <laughs> like, she, two way down part, the same road. My health bar disappears either way. I do think Luton's is a little bit more optimal because you do have less counterplay to her max range poke. If she is hitting you with Ginsu's, that means you get to interact with her, which is a privilege. Uh, you don't always get playing against Kaisa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's often four screens away one shot to you, so. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. As I was saying about the Baron sequence, is, uh, a big thing about Ezreal's poke is he needs to hit the first target he, he, he's throwing his skill shots at, right? And before you finish that armor penetration item, that all-important Cerebral Scrudge, tanks do a really good job of just eating the Qs. And because they ignored Blabber trying to poke the people in the back, it bit them, like, it kind of bit them in the ass because the Sivir just ran them over with the Sivir ult, Sejuani in the front. They didn't have enough damage anymore. He wasn't low enough to the point that they could ignore him either, so he just ran over an RG in, in their jungle and ended up getting Baron and a million gold at this point. That's like, what, a 5k gold swing nearly? I think four and a half or so. It's a lot, yes. Plus 4,596 on that power play. Let's take another look at the Baron and the subsequent very long fight. Yeah, it's like you're talking. You look at MNS, you look at Berserker, they're kind of just playing with the Baron in between them and the Ezreal. And then they just make the call to go forward. And Fudge, Blabber piling in, Zven finding a bit of a good engage there. They're able to burst down Dokla, and then the chase is just on. It's such a long sequence, but Cloud9 have the confidence to move forward because their carries are untouched. That is the key. It's just about making space for Zven and Blabber and Fudge. They just have to create that opportunity for Berserker to auto-attack.
Yeah, if we remember the fight that Energy won earlier, where it looked like, hey, maybe they could have taken the Baron if only Contract survived, the very first step in that fight was Berserker dies because he takes a greedy path into the fight. When he's alive, things are an entirely different realm. It's a whole different timeline for how you have to play the fights out because he's so impactful, because he always finds a way to maximize his DPS. One of the big reasons why Orn is great into Renekton because usually he can be more of a frontline than Renekton can be when you reach that mid-game breakpoint two items, you finish the Radiant Virtue, you hit level 13, get that upgraded. That's usually the point where you're tanky enough that you can walk in front of the enemy, like in front of the enemy Renekton in their comp and kind of tank them. Unfortunately, Doklas had a bit of a stinker this game, so he's been much weaker than what we're used to seeing from an Orn in mid-game. Blabber goes in, they immediately lock down Palafox as he has to distort away. Ignar's gonna be caught by Zven with the grand entrance off to the side, and Fudge's follow-up guarantees a pick on the enemy support. C9, 5v4 now for the next 35 seconds. Yeah, Cloud9 have full run of the map. They are dominating at this point. They're gonna be able to push in top, push in mid, get all those waves moving in the right direction, and they can bounce back and forth between these two lanes taking away jungle camps, really limiting the resources here for energy. And when you're already behind and you lose control of your jungle, it's only going to spell disaster. m &S could be caught here. Long range Ornhorn not going to connect thanks to the stasis. Palafox needs a little bit more burst. Contract's going in, but Fudge is too much of a brick wall. m &S turns it around with a kill on Contract. They're going to be traded one for one back and forth. Zven and Fudge still pushing forward as Blabber joins the mix. Berserker's behind him, but Sterex has been popped. Palafox and Dokla trying to fight back as FBI provides the firepower. The chains have found their way onto the front line, and Blabber gets cut down. Fudge barely escapes with 200 HP, and Palafox is still looking to see what he might be able to find. He jumps in for the auto attack on Berserker, but it's not a whole lot. Still chasing after these guys. They want to see if they can get just something else. Fudge is already going for the recall. Palafox jumps in for a very quick burst on the Berserker, takes him down to 40%. But I oh. think that's it. <laughs> Oh, Engnar accidentally just ulted there in the river, too, unfortunately. And that was looking for a moment, like FBI might have had the opportunity to turn around, but that's where you're seeing the power of the AoE from Sivir. The ricochets were chunking him down in the back line there. As they go for this initial play, the stopwatch bought a lot of time, though, for m &S. 100%, and one of the big reasons why having a really beefy front line is so important for Naraji this game is the longer the fight goes, the more spell rotations you're getting through. Sivir here is actually ends up chasing in. As you can see, she's just like walking up, trying to hit anything, but can't hit anything at all. Meanwhile, Ezreal's spamming Qs, LeBlanc spamming Q and E's, managing to hit a lot of damage whilst Berserker's just kind of standing there. Now, when he starts to get hitting, that's when you see the ricochets as he goes down really low. But the reason why this fight was so close in the first place is because he couldn't really hit anything because yeah. C9 is running into the poke comp. It's just interesting though, because in those final moments, right before he started getting uh, FBI started getting hit by the ricochet, I was thinking this could be a chase down. This could be a, you know energy actually taking them all out. But FBI was already low from the previous exchange. He was sitting at what 30, 40 percent health. Then a couple of ricochets hit him. All of a sudden, he has to E backwards instead of forwards. He can't yep. continue that chase, and that ends the exchange, which energy really wanted to keep going because they're in such a desperate spot right now. They need to find some way kind of claw back some position in this game. And I do think it's going to require some C9 mistakes from the position that they're in. 100%. I mean, the, the, the hourglass coming out from MNS means he can kind of jump in, trade one for zero, uh, dro drop the stopwatch. And then even though he might die after the stopwatch, that gives enough time to Sivir and the rest of C9's comp to run in and kind of pile on and finish off whoever tried to trade kills with, uh, with MNS. They also have GA, they have Hex Drinker, all these luxury items are through. TP coming in as Energy want to stop this Baron from C9, but it's already down to 2,000 and Contracts can't get into the pit. Dokla summons up the Ornhorn, but Blabber's leading the charge for C9. Fudge coming in from the side, hasn't popped the Dominus yet. Ven wants to go in for the ulti, but he won't find anybody with the quickness. Now it's Blabber and the rest of C9 having to fall back. Their engage does not succeed, but it does not matter. They already got the Baron and they got it for free. Super beautifully played by NRG. Unfortunately, like, C9 got what they came for. They got the Baron and left. That said, the way they kited back in that fight, never giving Sivir and Kai'Sa a champion to hit, is exactly how they want to play this composition. Unfortunately, well, with Baron already dead, C9 doesn't have yeah. a reason to stay chasing. And they're just like, well, I guess I'll go grab my Drake and go home. Uh, they're pretty happy with that. Uh, that said, that is the way that NRG needs to come back in this game. They need to get that death cap on LeBlanc. They need to get the Ravenous Hydra onto the Hy uh, onto the Ezreal, sorry, and then <laughs> hopefully they have enough damage to maybe uh, play like a 30 second, 40 second fight where they can yeah. come back. But uh, it'll be really hard against this Baron buff, and especially C9 doesn't mind going to six items. Like they're fine going for this Mountain Soul, or I believe, sorry, Cloud Soul. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're okay with scaling.
And I mean, Cloud Soul is going to make it that much more difficult to actually kite out with Sivir Ulti plus Cloud Soul. Renekton, I always feel, is pretty strong with, uh, with Cloud Soul as well. As Rakan. Rakan, even Kai'Sa going into the back line. They actually have a lot of champions that are pretty happy to play with it. So I do think that makes things more difficult. And as you were already saying, Bufo, you don't have anywhere to kite when they pin you in the base with a Baron buff, right? Ooh. So that is the difficulty, is at a certain point, you have to stand and fight or you have nowhere else to fight. I mean, that's going for a little uh, Abyssal Mask, perhaps? I'm not sure. Maybe he's, he's, he's trying to get in melee range. Uh, that's a Negatron Clock. That is not something I'm used to seeing on Kai'Sa. That said, I like it. Just 50 magic resistance. It's all he needs. All he needs is to stay alive. The longer we stay alive, the more odds Sivir is going to be hitting. When Sivir starts hitting, we win the game. Well, C9 going for the four-man push here in the top lane. They've got m &S back in bot, dealing with Palafox in a 1v1. These two are going in. m &S tries to go in for the Killer Instinct. Palafox is going to drop. C9 wins the side lane fight. Now m &S can recall, teleport to join the rest of the team, and look to end the game if that's the way they want to play it. Yeah, I think he very well will TP. He's going to TP on the ward, so defensive TP doesn't want to risk getting engaged on as he arrives. And Cloud9 can start to push in here. You can see Sivir staying top lane, trying to escort in that wave. But it's still a while before that next wave comes in through top, but they will knock down the mid lane inhibitor. And then they can threaten to actually cut off any energy members from that top lane tower, secure that as well. So it's going to be two inhibs going away of Cloud9 without even a fight in the base. And now they're going to reinforce with Fudge too. There's still 20 seconds before Palafox comes back to life. C9's looking to push for those Nexus turrets now. Fudge pops the Dominus. Doklas here on the front line, but he's melting very quickly. Has to flash back to the Fountain Steps as Ignar's also at half HP. Counterattack comes through with the Orn ulti, but there's no follow-up. C9 are just absolutely bruising energy right back into their fountain as you can see them trying to regain their position and keep the waves at bay. First Nexus turret finally dies, and Palafox is back on the rift. C9 won't be able to hard force the end of the game just yet, but they're going to continue kiting back. Energy seeing if there's any chase to be found. Keep your eyes on contracts. Nothing else. Nothing gonna happen. One really big thing about the theme of this game has really been C9's large cooldowns. The Rakan ultimate, the Sichuani ultimate, and the Sivir ultimate. When these go off, if NRG manages to survive the initial engage, it looks like they can fight back and try to somewhat counter as, in, as Ignar gets picked off there trying to get some vision. Couldn't survive the initial engage. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, right? <laughs> tough in, uh, in those situations <laughs> in particular. Contracts, though, going for a bit of a YOLO play here. Just recognizes like you got to do something. But I think m &S wins the Assassin War <laughs> yeah. against him. Yeah, that's Kai'Sa, and you're not Kai'Sa. Q is uh, <laughs> half your HP now. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, there you have it. Um, one, uh, one, one nice thing about the game, Zeus, is that your Kathian Reign does get upgraded, which AP Kai'Sa does not get the benefit of. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, uh, you can see both Palafox and Contracts feel the pressure. Contract went for the 1v1 on the side lane down bottom. Now, Palafox doing the same as all the ultimates get thrown. Ooh, FBI trying to kite this one out, but they've caught him. He's gone. C9 having killed the enemy jungler. Support and AD carry should just be able to march this in for the full Nexus here in game number two. Last remaining Nexus turrets your target. Doklas summons up the ulti for a last ditch attempt, but he only hits Fudge with the knockup. He's fine staying on the front with a Sterix gauge. Magnet Storm on the two targets, but it is not enough. There's no damage for energy. There's no way to hold on. C9 takes the dub. They're going to match point. Really strong performance here in game two from Cloud9. It didn't feel like there was ever any doubt about it. They're able to get the solo kill in mid lane. They get the kill up on the top side with Blabber. Berserker's chilling, farming. And they're out playing around the objectives. And we're on point with their engages. Blabber, I think, in particular, yeah. was finding so many good ultimates on the Sejuani, going for the Tokyo Drift action, queuing one way, throwing the <laughs> ulti the other way. Uh, does catch people and uh, was really, really on point with it.